The jalapeno is one of the most famous chili peppers in the world, spicing up dishes in millions of kitchens. You can find them in nearly any supermarket or produce stand, and in fact, it's become so ubiquitous that it's easy to take them for granted or think they're boring. But how did it become so popular? Why do we love something that hurts us? Hit the like button and sit back as we explore the humble jalapeno. Whether you eat them for the pleasure or you eat them for the pain, bro, we about to celebrate the humble jalapeno. To understand the significance of the jalapeno, we have to go back in time, way back to over 6,000 years ago in Mexico, in what is now the Mexican state of Veracruz, specifically the city of Jalapa. The jalapeno was used thousands of years ago, first as a medicine, then as a food. Its name actually means from Jalapa, so that seems to check out. The jalapeno appears to be one of the very first crops ever cultivated in the Americas. We know that Aztecs were cultivating the jalapeno, including commonly making chipotle by smoking the jalapeno to preserve them, and even making mole. The jalapeno was already a staple of Mexican agriculture when the Spanish conquistadors showed up in the 1500s, and they quickly came to enjoy the spicy little fruits. They took them back to Europe and the United States, and that's when cultivation outside of Mexico really began. By the early 1900s, the jalapeno was being commercially cultivated in Texas and made available all over the United States. Back then, it was marketed as the spiciest pepper in the world. Throughout the 20th century, the popularity of the jalapeno grew alongside the boom in Mexican food and found its way into countless dishes around the globe. Today, jalapenos are farmed commercially at a massive scale in Mexico and in the United States and really many countries around the world. They're typically harvested while they're still green and unripe, so they can make that long journey to supermarkets and homes far away from the farm. Some farms specialize in growing them all the way to red and ripe. Those are used in commercial products like sriracha hot sauce, but jalapenos are also a longtime favorite of home gardeners because they're so easy to grow and they can be successfully grown in nearly any climate. But why do we love them so much? You see, jalapenos, like all chili peppers, get their spicy kick from a compound called capsaicin. Capsaicin is believed to evolve over time as a survival technique for chili peppers, burning the mouths of any mammals who would try to eat their fruit, which they need for the plant to reproduce. At the same time, birds don't feel the burn from capsaicin, so they became a partner for peppers, helping to spread their seeds by eating the fruit and pooping out the seeds in a whole new area. So if chili peppers have evolved to be specifically unattractive to mammals, why do we humans love them so much? Like many things, it comes down to science, and in particular, our biology. Capsaicin in mammals binds to specific receptors called TRPV1 receptors, which then send a signal to our brain that says, oh my God, I'm on fire. But capsaicin's not actually causing any burns. It's a false signal. Our brain, however, doesn't know the difference, and so it responds by releasing dopamine and endorphins to try and prepare our body to deal with the pain. We humans love endorphins and dopamine. Um, these are our built-in happy chemicals, and so it quickly becomes a situation of mind over matter. We consciously know, hey, this tastes good, and it made me feel nice when I ate it. While our brain is saying, no, 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 you're literally on fire. We tell our brain to shut up and we keep eating because as humans, we are prone to do any action that brings us those happy endorphin rushes. And while that sounds like the ultimate backfire on the peppers, humans' love of spice has actually led to a better partnership than chili peppers ever had with birds. And worldwide proliferation of jalapenos is a result. But how hot are jalapenos? Typically, jalapenos are rated about 2,000 to 10,000 Scoville heat units which is pretty low compared to something like a habanero pepper, which can range from 200,000 to 500,000 Scoville heat units. Jalapenos bring a great fresh flavor that complements many different dishes. They can be eaten raw in both their green unripe and red ripe forms, cooked with other ingredients, dried and used as powder, smoked and used as chipotle, pickled and fermented. The options are endless. Jalapenos are also very good for us. A one cup serving of sliced raw jalapenos contains only 27 calories, mostly from carbohydrates and a tiny bit of protein. A single serving also contains 14% of the daily recommended amount of vitamin A, 66% of vitamin C, 1% calcium and 4% iron. 
Red jalapenos contain lycopene, and studies have shown that they can help reduce the risk of certain types of cancer. Red jalapenos are also a source of vitamin B6. Green jalapenos contain fiber, folate, and vitamin K, and so that's one more reason to grow jalapenos at home, so you can let some ripen fully and harvest others early to enjoy a wide range of vitamins in your diet. Speaking of a wide range, there's also an ever-growing list of jalapeno varieties being grown all around the globe. While the standard jalapeno is definitely a favorite, people have been working for centuries to breed interesting variations that may be aimed at having bigger fruit, more heat, less heat, different colors, different sizes, faster flowering and fruiting, or just different flavor profiles. This is accomplished in several ways, the most traditional way being to just select plants that naturally grew with a characteristic you like, and then you grow seeds from that plant to try and find offspring that share that characteristic, then you do that for several generations to stabilize it. The other way to create a new jalapeno variety is to crossbreed with other pepper varieties that have the characteristics you're looking for. You grow those out for several generations and stabilize the traits you like, and then boom, new jalapeno. A great example is the lemon spice jalapeno. One of my favorites, it's a bright yellow variety that was created at the Chili Pepper Institute at New Mexico State University. This was accomplished by breeding an early jalapeno with a permagreen bell pepper and then doing several generations of back crossing and stabilizing to achieve that desired output of a yellow ripening jalapeno consistently. Another of my favorite pepper plants of all time is the matapeno, which started as a natural variation of a jalapeno plant that had variegated leaves. Matt from mattspeppers.com snagged that first plant from a sea of jalapeno plants at a nursery and took care to grow plants from its seeds and selected the traits that he wanted, heavy white variegation, striping on the pods, and even some purple coloration on the stems. Over the last few years, he's been sharing seeds for this incredible plant and pepper enthusiasts around the world have been growing it. He's even created many new variants by crossing his matapeno with other cool peppers like the candlelight mute. Here's a quick look at a few other jalapeno varieties that I think are among the best. Azapache Brown. This jalapeno grows large fat fruits that ripen to the darkest brown color I have ever seen on any pepper. They're extremely sweet and flavorful, lightly spicy, and one of my favorites to eat raw. Diaguito jalapeno is another one. These grow in smaller, wider, rounder shapes than typical jalapenos, and they often feature quite a bit of corking, these lines on the skin here. One of my favorite varieties for pickling, these are great on sandwiches, great on salads, and on pizzas. The farmer's market jalapeno is an amazing looking variety, known for its completely corked skin when ripe. It almost looks like a potato. The beautiful, unique look of this variety, combined with good, juicy flesh and a solid jalapeno kick, make this one a real crowd pleaser. Everyone should grow these at least once. So now you know that jalapenos didn't become this popular by accident. They're one of the oldest known cultivated crops in the Americas, and we love the way their spicy burn tricks our bodies into releasing endorphins, and no plate of nachos is complete without them. Leave me a comment below with your favorite way to eat jalapenos, and who knows, maybe I'll use your recipe in a future video. If you want to learn more about different types of peppers, check out this video series I made featuring a pepper variety for every letter of the alphabet. And if you want to learn how to grow your own jalapeno peppers, check out this video I made teaching you how to start pepper seeds successfully. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and remember, plants help us grow.